Yo, have you ever been on the hunt for a new doctor and you ask literally everyone you know for their recommendation? Well, look, man, you're not alone because it's a struggle out here. Thankfully, there is a way. It's called ZocDoc, a place to find and book great doctors who actually have amazing reviews, many with appointments available within 24 hours, okay? You listen to all these health-obsessed folks, but when was the last time you went to an actual good doctor, okay? It's a struggle to find someone that will actually listen. And if you have to think about it, it's time to head to ZocDoc, all right? ZocDoc is a free app where you can find amazing doctors and book appointments online. Once you find the doctor you want, you can book them immediately with just a few app taps. No more waiting awkwardly on hold with a receptionist. And that's why you got to go to ZocDoc.com slash foods and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's ZocDoc.com slash foods. ZocDoc.com slash foods. Five, four, three, two, one. David, so have you ever beat a ticket? <laughs> yes, I've only beat a ticket by contesting it, and the, and the person didn't show up to court. Isn't that great? Yeah, it's fantastic. Like they're just like, okay, I'm not gonna deal with this shit. Mm-hmm. I've definitely lost, and I got fucking pissed because this judge was such a fucking asshole. <laughs> like this guy. Um, basically, it was I ran. They, he said I ran the fucking red, mm. but like I'm traveling at speed limit. And then it turned red. Mm, right one of those was, sneaky ones. Yeah, and I when I got in, it was still it was yellow. And then like halfway through, it turned red, and they still gave me the ticket. I was like, well, the idea behind it is is that if if it's yellow, right, and you're still going at speed limit, and there's a car behind you, you shouldn't slam on your brakes. Right, you have right. to go through it, which I did. I was like, that's what I remember from driving school. Mm-hmm. Like you're that's what you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. I was like, no, you ran the red. I'm like, wait, so. I was like, alternatively, if I slam my brakes, <laughs> that car hits me. That's what you guys wanted. They're like, it's the law. I'm like, it's the law. It's, what the fuck are you talking about? And you could see in the footage, the car was on my ass. So that's why I decided to just go right through it. Because if I hit my brakes, that foot would have slammed me because the guy was tailgating. It's a trap, man. Yeah, I was like, dog, this is the dumbest fucking thing ever. Ooh, I want to sock that judge in the face. You should have socked him in his face, dog. Mm-hmm. Too bad the judge was a fucking lady, even though Ooh. I didn't ask what that should've person identified with. Punched her, punched her in her fucking taint, dog. Pow! One time, bro, I felt like it was one of those situations where you, you speak things into existence, right? And, um... I had like a crazy, I forgot what ticket it was, but it was like, it was like a $500 ticket. And um, I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to contest this shit. I'm going to fight this shit, right? And w- showed up in court, pleaded not guilty, did that whole shit, had to show up again. And, you know, and also was praying that the police officer wasn't going to show up. And I was like, he's not going to show up. He's not going to show up. They fucking called my name. The cop wasn't there. I was like, yes, shit was dismissed. And then right next to the courthouse, was um a fucking um uh uh, uh what's that the uh, Mitsuwa market? So I got some bomb ass ramen that I love. It was delicious. Like the, I felt like the God. I felt like God was shining down on me that day, bro. He was like, "Here is your no ticket. Here is your ramen. You are blessed. God bless." Let me tell you guys a little <laughs> little little thing, right? So if you guys want to contest a ticket, right, that you rightfully feel like it's not your fault. Um, you can go to specific lawyers that are very good at this type of stuff. Like you'll see these like corny ads for it all the time, but guess what? They actually do work. Mm-hmm. So the idea behind it is this, is that most like most of these tickets can be contested pretty well is if you do it with the lawyer, right? So the lawyer will, let's say the ticket's going to cost you like 400 fucking dollars, right? But the lawyer will cost 200. Go pay for the 200, right? Mm-hmm. And by the way, they could even contest it where it's like, hey, you're not going to get away with this, but I lowered it down to it like a hundred bucks. Right. You, so you'll still pay less. Word. So I've done that before too, and it did work. That person got me out. I paid like the lawyer like 200 bucks for it or something like that. And I didn't have to pay 400. One time, dog, it was like a $700 ticket. It was so fucking dumb, dog. I was driving my ex home. She really had to pee. So I'm like low key speeding, right? But I'm like, man, she really has to pee. I got pulled over. It should have been just a regular little speeding ticket, maybe a couple hundred dollars. But what had happened was I didn't know that my insurance was expired. So to my insurance, it was like a couple months expired or whatever. Caught me driving without insurance. And also, 
I had an air freshener hanging. This cop was being a super dick, dog. Got me for obstruction of vision. I was like, dude, it was a little, it wasn't even a big air freshener, bro. He just felt like being a dick. It ended up being like a $700 ticket. It was crazy. That guy's going to hell for sure. Mm -hmm. That's super fucking unnecessary. Mm -hmm. And also, too, when, when cops do that, right, it's like, or highway patrolmen, it's like you already know people fucking hate you anyways. And now you're making it 10 times worse. Like you're making your job more difficult, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Way more difficult than it should be. Because now you're putting in this thing of like, okay, now I fucking hate all your fucking highway patrolmen. You guys are all fucking dicks. They're like, all part of the problem now. You're not even thinking about the bigger picture, right? Get, like the air freshener thing about, hey, give me a warning. Yeah. Right? And I'll fucking take that shit down. That's no problem. To be fair, I've also been given many chance, second chances from a lot of nice cops uh, when I got pulled over, you know? Um, there was one time, dog, I was probably, I shouldn't have been drinking and driving. Uh, I might have had a little something to sip on. I might have been driving home. This was before the Uber age. Um, it was my birthday. And I had just got my penis sucked. So what? You weren't even thinking straight. <laughs> so you I were cross-eyed as fuck. Yeah, bro. My head fucking had no blood in my brain. I was just driving. But here's the thing. I was almost home. And I wasn't even, like, buzzed at this point. But I was sleepy. So I maybe swerved in my lane a little bit. I got pulled over. And this cop, God bless his heart, maybe he saw that it was my birthday. He was like, he saw my address. He saw that I was like five minutes from my house. He was like, I will let you go. Oh, that's right. I did a fucking sobriety breathalyzer test. You were fine. Well, so I think I was, what, like the limit is like 0.06. I think I was like, I don't know, 0.05. Five. Yeah. <laughs> right? uh, I wasn't at the limit yet, but he was like, you don't have to be at the limit. I could take you to jail right now if I feel that you are driving irresponsibly and you're a danger on the road. Right. But he was like, I will let you go if you just pull over. You say you're sleepy. Just pull over. Take a nap before you go home. And I was like, Bet. yes, sir. And of course, I just drove straight home. But. What a nice guy, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, whenever I'm sleepy on the road, I don't take chances. I yeah. actually, I always pull over and knock out. He knows. I've slept at 7-Elevens. I slept, like, the moment I start driving, I go, sleepy. I get off and I, <laughs> and I knock the fuck out. You roll down all the windows, sleepy. <laughs> I just let go of the wheel. <laughs> How about you, David? So have you ever broken the law? Uh, many a times. Have I gotten caught for it? No. <laughs> I was a lot smarter than most people. Mm. Uh, I feel like when you're younger, you just do a lot of dumb shit because everybody's doing dumb fucking things. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of the stuff that I say would be illegal was just like always getting into fucking fights. Mm. And you, you're just, what, you're such a fighty boy. Everybody used to bully me. So but you're so big. But that's the thing. So here's the thing. And I'm, I don't know if other people have experienced this. Like if you kind of grow up in like a rough neighborhood, there's always like a smaller dude, like your size. <laughs> That likes to pick on the bigger nice guy because <laughs> it looks cooler to punk somebody who's really big and nice. Okay. You know what I mean? And mind you, thick glasses. I'm a sweet little choir boy, whatever, whatnot. <laughs> and so, like, I would always get fucking picked on, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm just a goofy nice guy all the time, like right. majority of the time. Mm -hmm. But then also I grew up knowing that, you know, if people try to punk you, you got to – if they're not fucking gang – like gang members, you should be able to stand up for yourself, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, I'm saying this – be smart about your shit. Like if you're in a bad neighborhood, you know a guy's affiliated, just get punked. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just get punked, run away, do something else. But if you're not affiliated and we're just two regular folks, mm -hmm. I'm down to scrap, even if I get my ass beat. Because mm -hmm. my idea was when I was younger and it's something that I learned from other people and my dad was like, look, you got to learn how to stand up for yourself. Mm -hmm. And if people are going to try to bully you, you got to make sure you are the most difficult person to bully. Whether you, you're good at clapping back at them yeah. or you're going to fight back. Yeah. So at, I used to just always get into fights because people used to always pick on me. Mm -hmm. And so and sometimes it would be my fault because, you know, my mouth is kind of crazy. I'd be like saying some shit. You got that sweet, sweet mouth. Sweet, sweet ass mouth. So <laughs> I remember this one time in high school. I've told this on my podcast where. So it was the day that we were supposed to get lockers, right? And so you have to get lockers after school. Sacramento was super hot. And I remember because I was walking up and me and my friend, shout out to Sarah. She was a sweet little white Mormon girl. Shout out to Sarah. Mm -hmm. She didn't roll in my circles. But we were she she knew of me and we were friends since elementary school and she was so fucking sweet still sweet shout out to Sarah I love you very much mm -hmm. and she was like do you need a locker partner I was like hey I'm perfect because I don't go to school anyways so it's basically <laughs> your locker I just need to store stuff every now and then mm -hmm. so we shared lockers we're about to walk up 
this dude, I remember, skinny ass Mexican dude, <laughs> my height, slick back hair. It was slightly bleached brown and black, <laughs> whatever, whatnot, right? Okay. Streaks in his stupid ass fucking hair, <laughs> big ass baggy Jinko jeans, uh -huh. red backpack, white t shirt. <laughs> So I'm going up. I'm, we're, so you have to get the permission to this line and, and that's a sign and you have to pass it through the little window hole. Yeah. I go up. This fool grabs my fucking paper and he just chucks it. Just cause? And he grab, puts his and he puts his stuff in first before me. Wow. And then, by the way, Sarah is the sweetest, sweetest girl ever, right? Yeah. And she actually, she's one of the people that have been friends with me since elementary school. So she knew how bad of a temper I had. Mm. But stuff like this would always happen to me because I'm always just the goofy dude. And I remember... What happened was she came up. I saw this dude. He, he's about to put a slip in. I grab his shit before he puts it in. I fucking tear that shit up. And mm. I fucking threw it on the floor. Mm. And I just look at him and I go, do something. Yeah. And then like high school fashion, the perfect circle comes around. <laughs> oh, my God. A fight. David Stone's going to fight. Because yeah. nobody's ever seen me get angry in school like that. Okay. And I would never get in fights in school because if I did, it would get reported to the office and then my parents would fuck me up. Mm -hmm. My dad would beat the fucking shit out of me. So mm -hmm. I would try to make sure I would never get caught. So this whole circle happens and I'm literally away from it. I'm about to swing on this fucking guy. And mm -hmm. Sarah in her sweet little Mormon hands just grab my wrist like Aww. this. She goes, don't do it. Aww. And then it just melted because you could, you don't want to, you know what I'm saying? Like this sweet girl yeah. and you're going to start socking up this dude. Right. And I remember after that happened, I was like, just, I was like, put your fucking hands on me and see what fucking happens. I don't know if I'm going to win this fight, mm -hmm. but I can't let him punk me. Right. Like, if he might as well beat my ass, I don't fucking know at this point, mm -hmm. but I, you have to scrap at that point. Or you're just going to be known as a dude that gets punked in high school 24 mm seven -hmm. as a senior. I have to let people know, like, you can't punk me like oh, this. Oh, this was senior year. This was senior of high school. Ah. It's like, you can't punk me like this. So I just took the risk. The guy fucking goes, man, fuck this shit. And he just walks out and he backs off. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. I was scared. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> I was a little scared. Sarah was trying to be the voice of God, trying mm -hmm. to keep the peace, and you wouldn't listen. Hey, she, she really did help me from getting suspended on, like, the fucking first week of high school. But that shit would happen to me a lot. When I was younger, it was like people would always try to push me all the fucking time. But later on, you just hang around some bad people and they just kind of protect you. And where are you at now, David? So with your temper, huh? Never fight. Mm. There's no point. You have too much to lose. That's true. People who want to pick fights have nothing to lose, which usually means you're a fucking loser. Like there's when you care about your people, your mm -hmm. circle, every action and move that you make affects them. Mm -hmm. So now I think about, OK, when I'm on this podcast, <laughs> I should, probably shouldn't say this. All right? <laughs> Tim has a family. <laughs> Tim has brand deals. <laughs> we have to be smart. Now I move being very mindful of other people around me. Good. And you know what, dude? You might get some brand deals out of that, bro. Yeah, if I accept them. I just hate doing brand deals. <laughs> unless it's on the podcast because they're the best. You just got to look at it like it's part of the job, man. You know I what I'm know. saying? I know. But I feel like you get better brand deals than I do. Sometimes I get brand deals. But it's like decent money, but it's the most obscure thing that I just don't want to sell. Ah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like your brand deals are nice. Like this is like stuff people can use. It's dope. People will watch it. My stuff is like, all right, guys, you want to get this carbon hunter's blaze? <laughs> I don't the fuck. Like, you know? It's because you have your crocodile Dundee hat on. <laughs> This is my Hawaii Bati boy. <laughs> Bati boy. <laughs> Who wants this butthole? Oh, God. <laughs> um, how was Hawaii, your trip that you just got back from? Let me tell you something, man. We love Hawaii. Thank you for everybody who's showing up to Jumi Waikiki. I pretty much very well appreciate it. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, Hawaii was great, man. Oh, this is what I wanted to tell you. Tell me, please. Hawaii is so funny because Hawaii, like, People on the island, too, they'll say about this when they go back and forth from the mainland. Mm. Like, Hawaii is kind of like a time capsule. Everything is it's still kind of the way that it was, in my personal opinion, Yeah. on, like, the west side. Maybe not so much in the city, like how it is with, uh, like, the 2000s here in the mainland. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Like, I saw and I heard <laughs> yeah. while I was on a beach on the west side. These it was a group of three girls. And they're just, you know, fucking around, joking with each other. Mm -hmm. And she called her friend the F word. Oh. And I haven't heard that since we were in high school. Hmm. And she was like, you little bitch ass forgot. Mm. And I was shook. And there was these two, there was these two young black kids and they were like digging holes in the sand. They went. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> I was like, oh, the slang hasn't changed. Interesting. And then we went to go uh, get a little food. Mm -hmm. And guess what I saw? I saw ABG in mm. the wild. I 
an S2K slammed to the floor with the girl with the tattoo on her stomach with the long eye. I, I, I thought I was in a time capsule. I, I think that that look is that look not popular anymore. The Asian baby girl look. The Asian baby aesthetic? girl look, but not with the girl driving the S2K slam to the floor. Oh. You know what I'm saying? With the dice in the mirrors. Like, that shit was, like, during, you know, I like, wonder if you know. Yeah, yeah. I was just going to say Fast and Furious shit. Mm-hmm. Wow. Trippy as fuck. I, I thought I was in a time machine. It was kind of interesting to see. You know, for the longest time, I wasn't even familiar with what an ABG was. Um Asian baby girl. Yeah, because I think maybe even though, yeah, I would do club shows and stuff, I wasn't necessarily like just paying attention to just like the subsets of uh, Asian shit like that, you know? Um, And I didn't, I wasn't familiar with that term until I did a show, I did a club show in Vancouver and someone was like, oh, the ABG is about to come out. And I was like, what is that? Ooh. And they showed me a picture. I was like, "Oh yes, okay. I have seen these in the that wild." That is my type. I, yes, yes. I, I'm. I am interested in this. Yes. <laughs> in, it, it's trippy because like that used to be the type that everybody liked. Right, like, right. That was the definition of a hot girl. Fucking Tila Tequila. Tila Tequila, <laughs> and then when she dropped her porn. Everybody lost pounds of cum at the same time. <laughs> Towels were used everywhere. <laughs> you know. You know. She's like. Uh, went kind of crazy. <laughs> Did she? Tila Tequila now. Um, I'm not sure what's going on recently, but first of all, she was she came out as kind of like a uh, a Nazi defending Nazis. That was a, what? For That's a, a weird take. Yeah, yeah. Like very like went to like some white nationalist convention and was like defending Nazis, and then she taped her eyes open and shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of you. Um, and then also. And then became super religious, like Christian religious, and had a YouTube channel where she was like asking for donations so she could record a Christian album. <laughs> it was like, it was dog, like, what's going on? It was crazy, dog. Like I was kind of randomly keeping up with it at one point. She's the godmother of fucking import models. Yeah. yeah. What is she doing? I don't know, man. Um, and I wasn't. A, I don't think I was a fan of her sex tape, to be honest. I think it went too quick to the anal. Oh. Yeah. You know, that's, that's not my fave. <laughs> no, let me tell you something. <laughs> I very much enjoy how we have a, a food show, right? <laughs> well, we'll review things very, you know, crazy, crazy like. <laughs> but when he's talking about this porn, he's reviewing it like how he should review the food. <laughs> like it's a bottle of wine. <laughs> You know, I didn't, I didn't like it. I think it went too quick to the anal. All right. <laughs> you know, uh, they didn't let the, it breathe a little bit. You know, <laughs> you know let it sit in the cup. You know, the... Um the fragrance wasn't <laughs> my favorite. He's breaking it down. But I tell you what, good mouthfeel. <laughs> I love the mouthfeel on that Tila Tequila sex tape. <laughs> <laughs> That's yo. That was the hottest word that everybody used to review for that. The, the mouthfeel. <laughs> the mouthfeel. Oh. <laughs> Splendid mouthfeel. <laughs> the mouthfeel. The mouthfeel is great. I love the way the mouthfeel is. <laughs> All right, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna explore each other's mouthfeels, and we'll be right back. This podcast is brought to you by ZocDoc. Have you ever been on the hunt for a new doctor and you ask literally everyone you know for their recommendation, and it turns out they don't know diddly squat. You know, a doctor who actually gets you and listens to you and makes you feel super comfortable is very very important. So you call their office and they have an appointment available, but then the receptionist tells you this perfect doctor doesn't take your insurance. What the heck of it all? Well, guess what? Wipe your stupid tears away, put away the ice cream, and head over to ZocDoc to find and book the doctor who is right for you and takes your insurance. My friends, listen to me right now. I've gotten such terrible advice from people. I had this little mole directly on my asshole, and they were like, listen, that right there is cancer. Turns out, just a dingleberry. And it would have been great if somebody, if a doctor could have spread my cheeks and let me know. But with ZocDoc, I just get online, I show them my bundle, and they're like, bro, dingleberry city. And guess what? Picked one, had them eat it. Uh, so, if you don't want to be a fool like me, my friends, ZocDoc is a free app where you can find amazing doctors and book appointments online. Go to ZocDoc.com slash foods and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash foods, ZocDoc dot com slash foods. (laughs) 
Speaking of that voice, randomly the other day, <laughs> so the nanny was with Veda. Um, no, the nanny was with Q. And, uh, you know, of course, Q can't speak yet, right? And I had just seen this TikTok of this British woman's toddler who had been watching. Are you familiar with Miss Rachel? No. Miss Rachel is a very popular YouTube kids show. Mm -hmm. uh, this woman went from just, you know, same shit uh, as like a blippy, like making videos in her house on her like little cheap camera, making videos for kids. And it super blew up. Millions and millions of views. We put Miss Rachel on for Veda all the time. And it's very like, um, you know, um, oh, I'm going to have some tequila. Can you say tequila? Oh, she's trash. Hi. Oh, no, she's great. Oh, because she's oh, yeah. <laughs> selling the kids tequila. Yeah. She doesn't really sell the kids tequila. This but is cocaine. <laughs> My, what color is cocaine? <laughs> but she's great. Super cute, pure voice, right? So there's a TikTok of this British woman showing that her child now is saying words with an English, American English accent because of all the Miss Rachel she's been watching. So she's, you know, she's like, she's like, all right, honey, say car. It's like, car. It's like, like that, you know? Or like, you know, say, um, um, what's a British word? Say clock. She's like, clock. Whoa! <laughs> you know, so she says shit the way Miss Rachel has been teaching her to say it. So randomly, I was thinking like, oh, what if Q was watching a bunch of, like, fucking British shows, and he all of a sudden one day busted out with his British accent, so the nanny was holding Q. Peppa Pig. Yeah, watching too much Peppa Pig, and one day he's just like, Unhand me, woman! <laughs> I'm trying to defecate myself! <laughs> Why is he doing the Shakira shit? <laughs> British Shakira? Hello, <laughs> hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Pardon me! <laughs> Mother, <laughs> I need to go to the Louvre. <laughs> <laughs> this brand of baby food is rubbish. <laughs> Could you receive or get, fetch me something from the larder? <laughs> That's a pantry, by the way. Oh, God. <laughs> Remove your tit at once. <laughs> Provide me with your sweet bosom. <laughs> I'm quite heavy. I am a few stones heavier. Is that a word? Is that they a say stones. Instead of like weight, Robin, can you look up how much, how many pounds a stone is? Sure. I am a couple of stones heavier. Oh, that would make sense because pounds is their money. Perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. Why would they say pounds? That, I need, bro. You blew my fucking mind. Whoa. Yeah, it makes sense to come up with a different word. I mean, and, and especially they're not using pounds out there. They're using fucking um, twenty-one gigawatts. Take <laughs> gigawatts. We're so uncultured. Fourteen pounds. Fourteen pounds. Fourteen pounds is a stone. Yeah. I lost, I lost me a couple of stones. That's 28 pounds. Yeah. That's a lot of weight, yeah. dog. <laughs> Q lost 28 pounds, bro. Q gained uh, fucking three stones. Oh, fuck. That's a <laughs> lot, dude. <laughs> like, I'll tell you this. I definitely understand how sometimes people can start switching accents when you're around. So for I was in Hawaii, right? And yeah, that yeah. shit actually upset me because <laughs> I was um, working closely with um, Joe's wife, Hannah. And she is UK as fuck. Mm -hmm. She just... <laughs> Fucking conveniently just doesn't say the letter T at all ever all right. ever you know just bottle what? of yeah. water yeah what yeah what <laughs> bottle of, I was like fucking say the T damn yeah. it like <laughs> say the fucking T yeah <laughs> she was like this is how you speak proper English what? so we were in this grocery store we were at Foodland we were grabbing some food and then I went I was like oh we should probably get a couple of bananas I was like what the fuck did I just from say? being around her from, I I said banana oh shit and that shit pissed me off. <laughs> My fucking American citizenship just started melting away, and I was upset. Dude, it totally happens um, in, the, in the early uh, seasons of Wild and Out when we would film. We would film in New York. They shoot in Atlanta now, but we used to film in New York, right? And you hurt. We, we'd be out there. You hurt. We'd be out there for like a month because you'd go out there for fucking, you know, uh, workshops, and then you know we um, kind of. You just did a lot of shit. We did a lot of shit. We got there for a whole fucking month, shoot the season um, for like a couple weeks. So, and I'll be kicking it with my New York people. And after a while, bro, we're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, like, wait, oh, I'm in New York. Like, what you about to get into? Oh, no, nah, so whatever. Like, it would just start happening, it's you know? It's trippy as <laughs> fuck. But at least you were doing still something that's very American. <laughs> I fucking went to the UK and I landed there for a hot second and I hated it. <laughs> I was just, I can't believe I said fucking banana. I was like, 
Banana. Banana. The what? fuck is up with bananas and bananas? <laughs> I want to be in India for like at least like four months and see what happens. <laughs> that would be trippy as fuck. Yeah. You know what I mean? What the hell do you think you're doing? <laughs> you know, I just come back. <laughs> I'm so glad you brought up the UK because, you know, England has that reputation of having terrible food. Yes. Um, how do you feel about the English breakfast? You're talking about, uh, you know, bangers and mash, you know, a little kind of beans and they fuck all of us. Yeah, fucking beans. And they got like, oh, what is it? They got the blood sausage on there. And I'll, I'll, I'll say this, though. What other people say about American breakfast is interesting. They go, why do you guys have dessert for breakfast? Oh, the pancakes and the pancakes. waffles. Pancakes. Yeah. And kid you fucking not, I went to this place that I always go to uh, whenever I want a quick breakfast bite. Mm -hmm. It's called mm -hmm. Nano's. And... I was there and it just hit me. I don't know why it hit me while I was eating this. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was eating a pancake and I go, this is cake. Yeah. Like it's literally called pancake. It's cake batter that's put into a griddle. And I never thought about that. I'm like, I'm fucking eating cake for breakfast. <laughs> and then it feels so fat. Yeah. And I, then suddenly I just, <laughs> it hit me. I'm like, why the fuck am I eating cake for breakfast? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because people are like, no, sweetie, you don't have dessert for breakfast. You need to eat something hearty. Have right. this pancake. <laughs> it's like, yeah. wait, that is dessert. I, I, I'll tell you what, man. Um, I don't know when this happened, but I got to a point one day while I was eating some fucking pancakes, and I was like, and I stopped using syrup because Whoa. I was like, this is this is this is too sweet for breakfast. Oh, isn't that weird when you get to that stage yeah. where you eat something and you go, too sweet. Too sweet for me. I don't I don't appreciate it. This is too much glucose corn syrup Fucking in my... Fucking <laughs> chutia, motherfucker. This is so sweet. You are an idiot. So what I do now with my pancakes, dog? Only butter. I, I just, butter? Just butter, no syrup. You're going to use butter? <laughs> you know what? I'm going to tell you this story on this podcast that I was going to save for my other podcast. But I'm going to tell you just because it's relevant. Bang, bang. Exclusive David So story. Let me tell you something. I was actually going to, this actually happened before I left to Hawaii and I forgot to bring it up on the podcast. Okay. I, so there's a, there's an Indian food spot that I always go to um, in Arcadia all the time, mm -hmm. right? But I was somewhere off, where the fuck was it? It was either, it was like the west side of LA. I uh, had a meeting out there and I was craving Indian food. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the, the restaurant's name. I just kind of yelped something around in the area. I went in there, right? Let me tell you, this is one of the most uncomfortable situations <laughs> I've ever been in my life. Yes. So you go into this Indian, I went into this Indian restaurant. I'm not sure if it's new, but there, wa there wasn't many customers there, right? So I went to go pick up. I, I got a chicken biryani mm -hmm. with mango chutney on the side. Okay. And uh, some sock paneer. Sock paneer, spinach dish, cheese inside it. You guys know. Mm. So I go in there and I open up. I'm about to leave and he, uh, the mango chutney's not there. Mm. So I go back <laughs> and I was like, oh, hey, excuse me. I ordered mango chutney. I ordered some mango chutney. Uh, I didn't get it in my order. And he goes, no. <laughs> and, bro, I was so taken aback by how fast he said it. I was like, he didn't even take a second to think about it, right? And yeah. I go, excuse me? He's like, no chutney. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I ordered. And I showed him, like, because I got, I ordered it on Grubhub to, yeah. to, for the pickup. I was yeah. like, no, it's right here. It says the chutney. And he goes, he starts screaming something in Hindi or whatever language, I don't know which language it is, but he started screaming some shit, right? And he starts going into the back. And I hear him start yelling at the lady in the back, oh. which I'm assuming is his wife. Okay. Right? And then, I don't know what the fuck I walked into, yeah. but for sure they were fighting before oh. I got in there. Oh, okay, okay. Because he was so curt with me. And I think <laughs> that the emotional stress he got from his wife transferred over to me. <laughs> no chutney. <laughs> no. Right? And the ice here is screaming. He comes back yeah. and he has the chutney. He just boom, slams it Whoa. on the floor, right? And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to leave. He goes, no, don't leave. What? He tells me. And I'm like, wait, are you talking to me or are you talking to your wife? Yeah. And he's like, don't leave. And he starts screaming some type of shit. And I'm sitting here uncomfortable as fuck. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. now I'm starting to get mad because <laughs> I think he's yelling at me, right? Yeah. I'm like, hey, man. Don't fucking raise your voice. He goes, nobody's talking to you. <laughs> he starts going at his fucking wife. I grab the food and I just start walking out slowly. Hilarious. And as I'm walking out, he tells me not to leave. He goes, don't leave. I'll give you a full refund. Don't fucking leave. And he starts saying something in Hindi or whatever. They're screaming. Yeah. I just walk out and I start leaving with the most uncomfortable situation I've ever been in my life. Huh. Let me tell you something. 
culturally universal, why is he pissing you off? <laughs> <laughs> this dude, I want to know <clears throat> what the fuck, what they were fighting about before I got in there. Yeah, you know, I um, no. I couldn't imagine. <laughs> no chutney. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> I couldn't imagine running a business with Chia. Oh, <laughs> the fights. Yeah. And um, are you going to just leave the plates there? Oh, oh, man. You know, here's the thing, right? And I was thinking about this the other day, about why the longer you're with somebody, the more annoying they become. <laughs> because you can read everything. It, and and it's, it's that. And also, you know, the earlier on it is, you don't necessarily have to function together, okay? Like, especially when you're dating, you go back home to your own shit. You do your things your way. They do their things their way, right? And then the more you're together, you move in, you get married. It's almost like now you're you're doing business with this person in a sense that... You get no break, bro. You get no break at, ever, and you're, you have to keep this household together, right? So it's like these two oftentimes contradicting ways of doing things that have to come together but you have two people where you're like hey this i was doing fine when i was doing the shit my way so now it's like little shit that you pay attention to that you never had to before can start to really like chip at you you feel me like where me and chia <laughs> our biggest shit now is like very passive aggressive ways where we um like She'll expect me to understand what she's saying, and I will expect her to understand what I'm saying. And where, you know, and she will argue her defense, and I will say my way was right, but whatever. But it it always comes down to this. I'm like, okay, so I I understand what you're saying, but I I disagree that I disagree. I don't think that's what you said. I know that's what you say that it meant. I just don't. For me, that doesn't make sense. You know what I'm saying? And it's a lot of that. And it's like, and we're both trying to be very calm about it. She's like, okay, okay, okay. Now, and I'm trying to defend myself. She's like, okay, let me finish. Yeah. Okay. But when you said this, usually you do this. And I'm like, ah, I, yeah, but that's not the same. <laughs> and we're both just kind of doing this, right? And it's like, you got to choose these battles where it's like, is this worth it? You know, it's always worth it. <laughs> Let me tell you, right before I came here, me and my lady got into it, got into it a little bit <laughs> because you know why? And I'm pretty sure this is, by the way, this is not particular to a woman talking to a man. Sometimes it's how, you know, couples just talk to each other sometimes yeah. and they don't even know. So we'll, we'll, you do this to even your friends sometimes where you're dealing with stress and then you put it out to the pr closest thing next to you, mm. right? So we're in the process of moving again for like the fucking fourth time. And so we're moving. Already annoying. Already annoying <laughs> as it is. So um, I was like, hey, I don't really need a big office space. Okay. I bought a laptop. I could just work anywhere. The laptop's an editing machine, so I don't need a full desk. I just need a place to go work when you have friends over, so I'm not downstairs with you guys, mm -hmm. right? And then she just, she was like, okay, that's fine, but just to let you know, Already right there. Not very nice, right? <laughs> Just to let you know, I need this place clean. So I like that. And I'm like, <laughs> I looked at it. I was like, hey, I don't like the way you're talking to me. Mm -hmm. Number one, the way that you phrase it, you make it sound like I'm a fucking, like a filthy trash bag. Oh. And so I was like, you've seen my office. It's fucking immaculate. <laughs> so why do you feel like you have to tell me, you have to remind me like I'm a child. Yeah. That I need to clean after myself. Like, have you seen my off? Have you seen my podcast room? It's immaculate. Mm -hmm. Right. She goes, I just want to, she goes, yeah, but I have to tell you to clean. I got, I have to, I want to let you know that you have to keep it clean. And I'm like, did you, we don't have to scrap. <laughs> like, is this what you're doing right now? And then she was just like, why? I can't ask you. I'm like, you're not asking. You're demanding that I keep it clean mm -hmm. as if I'm the dumbest person on earth. My, and I, mm. oh, that shit. And I was like explaining to her. She goes, well, how should I have asked? I was like, you know how you should have asked. Right. And let's say even even then I'm a messy person. Right. Mm. I was like, how would you have asked? How would you have spoken to somebody that way if, if you wanted a good result? If you wanted a good result, that's not how you would have done it. Mm -hmm. Like the result is important. If you wanted to keep it clean, you wouldn't be coming in so fucking hard. Mm -hmm. So imagine if I did that to you. So just be mindful of that. And then, you know, we got into a little bit and I was like, you know what? All I need is an apology. Mm -hmm. Just say, I'm sorry. She goes, I'm sorry. 
But I'm like, you motherfucker. <laughs> I mean, I get, you know, it's, and that's the thing about it is like, because I tell you all the time, look, it's, it's, it's just how you say it, right? Like, don't, I just, you know, I hate like when people talk to me, like I'm dumb, like, and, and I think when you're with somebody for so long, you get so comfortable. We just you, be saying shit. You kind of forget to put that sweetness on. You forget to put that syrup on there. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I'm saying? Now I'm over here with some dry ass pancakes. You know what I'm saying? And I, I be trying to at least butter it a little bit. <laughs> You know? But she took all the syrup off, dog, and she's Canadian. What the <laughs> fuck? She should be coming with the syrup, bro. Where the maple sweetness? <laughs> Where the maple sweetness at, baby? <laughs> and and apparently, according to Chia, <laughs> even when I'm trying to be calm, I have a very uh, a condescending face. Mm. Um, also, I think I get this from my dad, where if I don't understand and I'm confused, the face I make is a are you dumb face, mm. which I'm not, I don't do on purpose, but it is kind of like a, like a, like a that, like mm. a, and I'm trying, it's just me processing though. But to other people, and Rick has also said this, he's like, you make that fucking face, man, where you look at someone like they're stupid for what they're saying, but really it's because I don't understand and I'm trying to understand. <laughs> and I get that from my dad because I know he also does that, where like if my dad's confused, but my dad's next level. Mm -hmm. If my dad's confused, he does this. What? <laughs> Or he'll go, what? And I'm like, oh. He just goes, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, don't do that head thing. Don't do it. Don't, you don't have to do that shit. Oh, but so I I try to, and I and at this point, I know I can't control it. So when she is confusing me and I feel that face coming on, now when we're being all fucking passive aggressive towards each other, I'm doing this dog. I'm like, so, and I'm like looking at the floor and shit. I'm looking at the ceiling because I don't want to project this face to her, right? I'm trying so hard, but this is my face, man. I, you know what? I understand that face. When people make that face, it doesn't bother me because mm -hmm. that's just your, like, I'm confused. I know. You know what I mean? And we're expressive people. So when we're confused, we've confused. So it's like, what? Yeah. Like, I'll, I'll say this phrase a lot, which she doesn't fucking like. I, I go, <laughs> and it's simple. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? <laughs> And that pisses her off. She'll say something. I go, what do you mean? <laughs> then she's like, gets under her fucking <laughs> skin, dog. But I don't know. So I'm, at, I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> she'll just be like, I see it just festering her. And I'm like, I, I don't know. I'm asking. Yeah. And you know, it all kind of boils down to just like. How, she's fantastic. By she's, the way. she's great. How we, and my wife as well. Um, how we just process our confusion and how we, you know, and we just, sometimes you're different people that process things differently and things come off differently and that leads to your button heads. You and know? I have to apologize to her today too because I'll do this thing now where where, she, where she'll start escalating the conversation and while she's in mid-sentence, I just start walking away. Oh, God! And then the reason why, and I, she goes, why do you do that? Like, don't do that. Don't ever do that. I was yeah. like, why do you do that? I was like, because you keep berating me and I'm about to raise my voice. <laughs> so I want to separate myself from the situation so I could cool off and come back because I don't want to raise my voice. I never want to raise my voice. Shut up! We're going to take a break. Yeah. And send a wish out through the air. Just send a wish out in the dark and do that care bears countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. David, so let's take a oh, shot. Yeah. Let's take a shot. And also, too, the thing that where I messed up once again, like I said, <laughs> is that, you know, I tend to walk away. But she said, and she's 100% right about this. It's like, if you just do that, you got to let me know. Because if not, it just sounds like you're just leaving mid-conversation. Mm -hmm. But I really want to just walk out for a second and just go like this. You're God damn it! <laughs> and then come back. I, I feel the same way. I um, Well, you know, I, I kind of feel like oop, I, uh, I poured you a bigger one there. Um, I also, sometimes I just, I, I don't walk away. I do shut down when I'm just so frustrated. Not to the point where I'm not listening, but I just kind of go, I'm done 
arguing with this, but I don't say like I'm done. I don't say like, all right, let's stop. I just kind of go, mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's when she was like, what? That's when she knows I'm pissed. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and that's when she's like, she, that makes her so mad. But it's just because I don't want to continue this because I know there's no point to it. Yeah. And I would just rather just kind of calm this bubbling rage inside. You know what I'm saying? And you know what's the funny thing too, man? When you're in a, in a long-term relationship, I'm pretty sure for a lot of people who are in their honeymoon love phase, they go, well, what's the big deal? Uh, that doesn't sound like a big deal. That's because everything is so fucking perfect. Sometimes the small things get under your fucking skin, right? Yeah, man. Like our wives are fucking fantastic. So when you've been around each other for a while, the dumbest things get under your skin. And you know what? Here's the struggle too. Um, you kind of get... you. In the beginning, you do a lot of shit where like, this is little. This is not worth bringing up. Like, why would I make a big deal out of this? And when you're together for a long time, I can't live with this forever. You ignore the little shit for so long that the little shit starts to bug you more and more. Mm -hmm. So I kind of took this lesson from Rick. Rick made this a point one day where he's like, I he started bringing up everything that bothers him, even the little shit, because he didn't want it to fester and get to a point where you ignore it, ignore it, ignore it. And then it bubbles and you blow up over what seems to be a little thing that this person is like, where the fuck is this coming from? You know, why are you getting so pissed at me fucking leaving my toenail clippings here when you've never brought this up before? Where you, in your head, you're like, this isn't a big deal. I'll clean up the toenail clippings. But you don't know that this person for like, I don't know, five years has been like, you goddamn toenail clippings! I, see, I agree with that. The only ca caveat, yeah, the only caveat, uh -huh. I would say is like, when you bring up your pet peeves, um, and I asked Meryl to do this, it's like, she goes, well, if I do it too much, then you're going to think I'm nagging. I was like, you can bring it up, but think about how you do it. Yeah. Right? So let's say, for example, let's use a toenail clipping thing for an example, mm -hmm. right? And by the way, I'm guilty of this as well. I'm just using her as an example because it's easier just to punch down. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's say for toenail clippings, right? Like or fingernail clippings, I left it somewhere, mm -hmm. right? And there was one time. Instead of going, hey, why did you do this? Like that, you could be like, Hey, I noticed that you left your clippings here. Like it, it was one time, but just try to make sure that you don't do that because it bothers me a lot. Mm -hmm. You know? And then I'm like, oh shit, my bad. But if it's like, dude, you're so gross. <laughs> 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 what the fuck do you think is gonna happen, right? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like I said, this is not something that she's just guilty of. I'm guilty of this as well. So yeah. we've been learning to like, okay, if we want to get something from somebody, there's a very efficient way to do it. Yeah. And if you're going there guns blazing in a long-term relationship, you're not, it's not going to last. It's like that saying, dude, you attract more bitches with honey or something like that. A hundred percent. That's exactly how it goes, dude. <laughs> Look, man, like the, today's lesson is, just put a little syrup on them pancakes, man. Do it the American yeah, way. Just yeah. put a little bit of syrup. Y'all are out here trying to do it the British way. But I don't know. beans, beans on me breakfast. Well, excuse me, miss. <laughs> I was up on the chimney, sweep, sweep, sleeping away. <laughs> I would like me a fair can of warm beans with a side of warm beer. <laughs> you need a little bit more gravy. You don't have enough gravy on you doing your bowl, but you won't. That's so oil. funny. Doug, I'm, he told this story before on the podcast, but I, every time I hear gravy now, I always imagine you just getting that dry ass piece of meat. And then they're, they're just like, you're not going to get a little more gravy on that, are you? It's a little so, dry. It's so, they were, they were, it's so dry. You, don't, you barely have any gravy. Where's all your gravy? It's like, why don't you cook it to where it's not dry? Can we do that? You fucking donut. You fuck. Listen to me, you fucking donut. <laughs> hey, Gordon Ramsay, by the way, if you think he's harsh in the American one, you guys should watch the British one. He's way worse. Have you seen that Keen Peel skit, uh, <laughs> the cooking show? <laughs> Bro, that shit is so funny. I now gotta say, this is the worst dish I've ever had. <laughs> that, in comparison to the other oh, worst. Like, like these <laughs> weird. Yeah, it's like. This makes me want to kill myself so I can come back and, and eat, eat again. again. <laughs> <laughs> I believe in reincarnation. Well, let's take a shot, David. So 
Uh, this is our second episode of the day, and I figure let's have a little fun. I, you know? I sobered up a little bit. I was so fucking plastered. Over. Yeah, now that I see the pinkish hue going away from your cheeks, let's take a Thank shot. Huh? Terramana tequila. Terramana <laughs> tequila. I have this in the house, and I haven't been drinking it because uh, I just haven't. Cheers. All right, cheers. Oh, we forgot to. Uh, we'll do it on the next episode. We have f- food here for the next one. You sure? Yeah, because we're almost done. Okay. Yeah. Shout outs to The Rock, by the way, who, by the way, I find it hilarious that people don't believe he uh, doesn't take steroids. No, The Rock is completely. Tim, he, God he's, damn it. He's in the gym 23 hours out of 24 hours. He does not sleep. He is the most charming man in the world. He has amazing teeth. And he. He is also almost 60 years old, and he should not be that buff unless he takes steroids. Because he's The Rock, and he's better than all of us. So many people take steroids, it's unreal. And I feel like I'm missing out. Um, you want? Are you down? Okay, so I actually researched this. <laughs> I actually know quite a few people who do take steroids. Oh, right. shout out to Barquan. <laughs> Bart's definitely not nowhere near buff enough to be taking steroids. <laughs> He's not on steroids at all. Okay, shout out to Gio. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Gio. She's on all the stuff. <laughs> that stupid buff bitch. But everybody has warned me about the same thing. They go, once you're on gear, it's it. You know, some people receive it. Better. What's gear? Gear is steroids. Oh. Right? Once you're on the sauce, the juice. Okay. You don't get to dictate how well your body receives steroids. Okay. Right? Some people deal with it very fucking well. You have no side effects. Mm. You be you, The way that you gain muscles is amazing, right? You gain stamina. Other people, you might get back knee, hair loss. Mm. It fucks with you emotionally because your ho- hormones are so out of whack. Mm. Uh, and they said, like, if you do it very consistently, right, you're basically hormonally going to be fucked for the rest of your life. Why? You're going to have to be dependent on this forever. So there are some people who do, like, short cycles or whatever, and their body regulates it back through other, you know, I don't I don't know the whole thing, but they'll be given a, a specific regimen on how to do it, right, to cycle on and cycle off. But he goes, I'll say this. When you start taking steroids, you look amazing. You feel younger. You feel stronger. Huh. Everything is dope. What is what is going to stop you from continuing to take it? He goes, it's highly addictive. It's uh-huh. not an addictive substance per se. Oh, but it makes you feel so good. Yeah, it's like, okay, you could work out three times a day. You're not tired. You're not sore. And then your gains are four times the amount you would get if you didn't take it. Why would you ever get off this stuff? So it's like, just be wary of the consequences of like being on. If you're on it, you're on for life. It shrinks your balls though, right? That's another side effect, right? Mm. So there are people who have openly talked about them wanting to have kids and they had to get off of steroids so they could have kids. Really? Because the sperm count was low, all this other bullshit. Interesting. People have openly talked about this on podcasts. So I did kind of research it extensively to the best of my abilities to see if I ever wanted to take it in my 40s. Oh, word. Um, and I don't think so. Yeah, don't do it. I, I, I just don't care. Like I don't care enough. Yeah. Yeah. Unless I go bald and then I'm going to be on all that <laughs> shit. I'm going to be fucking fussy tube. I'm just going to get buff and fat, buff and fat, buff and fat, buff and fat, buff and fat. <laughs> that guy fucking changes body shapes more than Oprah. That's fucking crazy. Yeah, man, babe, but he looks great right now. Uh, that boy's on all the gear for sure. No. Oh, yes. Everybody just transforms their body in one month. Yes, dude. He has an addictive personality, so he just gets into working out for a month, oh, dude. addictive to steroids, I guess. Whoa. I didn't say anything, Fousey Tube. I hope you're doing good, man. Hey, it's okay if he takes steroids. He's not, he's not like a professional athlete. Um, should I take steroids? You just need to do push-ups. You're fine. <laughs> yeah, this is true. This is true. This I, is so much work. Man, I'll, before we end this, I will say this. For the first time in my life, mm-hmm. I was on the beach and I got a little envious of these dudes that were buff. I was Why? like, man, it would be kind of nice to look like that once in my life. And I keep getting there close. My problem is, is that, like I said, I get close to it and then I just go, all done. <laughs> I go back to eating again. <laughs> I mean, it's it's luckily for you because I always gain weight when I go to Hawaii. Luckily for you, you've been so many times now. I feel like you're overeating yeah. all this shit. Um, and thank God I uh, I'm not like touring or anything right now. So actually, Your face begin all puffy from the salty uh, foods. And my face. Oh, it goes straight to my fucking face, dog. Face and love handles and nipples for whatever reason. You know, <laughs> just get very puffy nipples. You know. You've been drinking. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, tour life is so difficult to eat, right? You know, um, but luckily, like I said, you know what's really helped me, dog? This fucking past couple weeks where I've been eating kind of healthy. I, I think I told you this. Um, I ordered way too much Korean barbecue one day. And so for like three days, I was just eating just 
Korean barbecue and the leaves, you know, and the lettuce wraps. I was just wrapping it with lettuce. I was barely eating any rice, like maybe. How good did you look and feel? Oh, dog, I looked great, dude. I felt fucking good. That's the first time I was like, oh, shit. I should eat healthy because I forgot, like, how much it just, how quickly it works. Sometimes I'll go into my old photos <laughs> of when I was eating the healthiest <laughs> and I was 50 pounds lighter and way more beautiful. And I get sad. <laughs> David, so I disagree. I think you're more beautiful. Thank you. Now, because you're happy. Yes. I do. So if you, there's a chart that I saw years ago that I thought was a really great way for people to kind of live their life when it comes to like their physical image and how they want to eat. Mm -hmm. It was a very realistic chart, which I appreciated. They, it was different body types. It was like obese, slightly chubby, what people consider kind of normal fat ratio, a little bit buff, ripped, and then extremely buff. And to that was tied the workout regimen, the lifestyle. Mm. And they go from this body chart, Look at the lifestyle that you want to live and to see the body that you get. Mm. If you're okay with eating here, drinking every now and then, staying slightly active, then have this normal body, mm. stay here. Yeah. Because it's about happiness. Right. So if you want this, understand that you have to sacrifice this to get that if this is what makes you happy. Yes. So look at the, the lifestyle first, then see the body after. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I fuck with this. 100%. Because if you really want these, let's say like these, like, you know, superhero bodies it's like okay for example paul rudd when he had to get swole for ant-man um they asked him like how did you do it you know and he's like honestly for six months i stopped doing everything that made me happy <laughs> that's so <funny. laughs> bart right now is uh he's you know he has a bucket list where he wants to enter a bodybuilding thing right mm -hmm. That fool right now is texting me food all the time. <laughs> He's just like, bro, I, he showed me what he was eating. And then I sent that photo to a starving kid in Somalia. <laughs> that kid was like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> it shit was insane, bro. He goes, yeah, this is like what I have to eat in order to do. Because bodybuilding isn't healthy. Just to give you guys a heads up, yeah. um, bodybuilders knows this. They know this too. Like yeah. when you look at a bodybuilder and you see these extreme striations, they're just dried out from like not drinking water and they're jacked. They're actually very unhealthy. Mm. Their bodybuilders are very open about it. Because it's all for the show, that for one show. day. Yeah. yeah. They drink like a bottle of water. I, uh, from a person, uh, from a buddy of mine who used to bodybuild, he goes like, dude, even when you rehydrate back, he would have to take, great, perfect, right here. Mm -hmm. bottle caps and he would fill it up and drink it slowly because if not it would fuck him up somehow really like drinking too much water instantly it would make you sick it'll make him throw up it'll put him in the shock so he would have to bottle cap drink what slowly like that for him to like rehydrate himself because they're at like two percent one percent body fat completely dehydrated oh because they're trying to get rid of all the water weight yes so that's how you get that thin skin so you could see all all of the vascularity damn the veins. Um, it's pretty fucking nuts, man. Like the stuff that they have to go through to do that. There was a true life MTV of this guy that was, um, a bodybuilder. And I remember specifically, I don't know why this particular image sticks in my head, but it was an Italian dude and he was a competitive bodybuilder and he was at dinner with his huge Italian family. They're fucking spaghetti, garlic bread, you know, all the really like hearty Italian shit. Spaghetti. And he's there at the dinner table eating a head of lettuce. <laughs> and he's like, <sighs> This is what I gotta do right now. <laughs> Dude, yesterday, because I know we had, we were gonna, I'm gonna be moving, and then we're gonna be doing this uh, three days of podcasting together. Mm -hmm. I had to uh, <laughs> take some uh, gummies to help me fall asleep. Mm -hmm. Here's the problem: get some munchies. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any food in the house because we're in the process of moving. But there was like Canadian bacon and Swiss cheese. Oh, I ate like ten of those. Yeah, <laughs> boy. Oh, that's good. I'm but high. Let me eat another one. Low but that's, fat Swiss cheese. That's healthy, right? It actually wasn't a lot of calories. I calculated it because this, it was low fat Swiss cheese or yeah. whatever. But when you're high, everything tastes good. Dog, first of all, that sounds great. Um, have you seen these IG ads for these um like steak chips? No, but I've had them in I've had steak chips in Hawaii. And how'd you like it? Good. Yeah, I've they're fucked fucking with good. It. It's crazy because with this company, I bought it from um, they're actually really good, uh, especially if you like the taste of like a fatty steak because the fat actually kind of really the flavor, the flat, the flavor of the fat really kind of takes over the chip. Um, but it's like I'm ordering the kind of the more 
high quality, like the ribeye fucking steak chips. So it's like thirty dollars for a bag of chips <laughs> for a healthy snack when I could just order a steak. You know what I'm saying? That's so fucking funny. It's like, can I get some overcooked steak for thirty dollars, please? <laughs> yeah, facts. Okay, thank you very much. Can I get some dry, very thin, not uh, satisfying steak for thirty dollars? Oh. You see the chef in the back just throw his pan. <laughs> well, guys. Well, guys. That wraps up this episode of Dudes Behind, behind the, the Food that for that Um Make sure you follow us on OnlyFans. Oh, butthole picks. Butthole picks all day and, and foot picks as well. And sometimes we combine them. My big toe, his butthole. Tune in. You don't want to miss it. Thank you for watching another episode of Dudes Behind the Foods. As always, uh, you can watch these episodes without the ad reads if you go to Supercast. Yep. And the link below and check that out. And uh, hey, buy things from Secret Society, buy things from goodybrand.com. Oh, bye. Bye. Yo, it's the dudes behind the food. Dudes.